Praise the Lord and a warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for your time, thank you for your patience, thank you for your trust that you have in the word of God that you are able to dedicate your time. What brought you here, what brought, what brought me here is the same reason that we trust in the name of Jesus, right? There is no other name that could replace this name. There is no other name greater than this name. That's exactly the reason that why you and I are here, well and alive. Yeah. But don't worry. If you are having some health issues, if you are having some problems in life, that's life. To bring imbalance in life is devil's work. To restore that balance and stability back in our lives is God's work and we are not going to give up that fight or give up that good fight of faith right Romans 10 17 and 10 9 I love these verses okay warm welcome to this series where I think this is episode number two and we are in chapter number eight episode number one it had several sessions through um, the study what we are dealing the similarities and the ministerial uh, comparative study but then uh, between these two great people Jesus the son of God and Paul the apostle um, we are taking you through a kind of a new covenant recap right the chronological study and at the same time a thorough analysis on what is this new covenant all about and what was uh, Jesus trying to preach and teach many people if you ask them what did Jesus preach and teach he preached miracles <laughs> he can, nobody can preach miracles <laughs> yeah people can you know men men of god women of god can perform miracles he, did jesus preached miracles one guy was saying this <laughs> long ago the other person is saying you know uh what, what, i'm the question is what did jesus preach and teach and uh, one person sensibly answered this question jesus preached and taught how to overcome the wiles of the devil the powers of darknesses and the principalities wow wonderful response good other guy was talking jesus preached love very nice the per other person jesus preached kindness jesus preached compassion jesus preached preached about sympathizing and empathizing both all of this is true but all of these fellows missed one important thing this, these were true right they said the truth or they spoke the truth. You know what's the most important thing Jesus preached? Jesus preached that we got to be overcomers against uh, the sins, against the sinful deeds. And who is going to instill that sin or sin, sinful deed or the thought to sin or rebel against God? It's Mr. Devil to fight against the demons and the demonic forces. And that's why I keep telling you, all the time almost on every session we we are living in the spirit filled world and we don't happen to see the spirit right it doesn't have a form spirit right all of us use sanitizers these days because of the pandemic situation right and uh, there is an important component in that alcohol or spirit and uh, when you just rub it on your hands you know it just evaporates likewise the spirit without a form is some something that will evaporate but the spirit takes the form when it occupies a person's body and a person will have to give an approval yeah you are approving that i yes i, I love i would love to be an alcoholic you're approving yes i like love to be a pornographer i love to be a prostitute and then the the demons will come and rule over you reign in you possessing your body demonic positions about which we discussed uh, a lot in the in our previous session and I uh, would strongly recommend go to chapter 7 and please have a have a, have a check on that right it's a, it, it came out very well you will understand clearly how the the demons fight against and Jesus came to this world to help us teach us to fight against the wiles of the devil wear the armor of God and fight against the wiles of the devil do not give up on your fight on the same lines or slightly a different line i would say we will continue our study 
uh, we would we may be needing few more sessions uh, at least some eight or nine sessions more i'm not in any mood to <laughs> close this at all yeah we want to complete the recap of all that jesus spoke all that jesus taught yeah and we are going in a chronological order and apparently we are also learning from the epistles written by paul what paul thinks about what jesus preached and taught honey you know what interestingly paul quotes the same uh preaching and teaching left behind by jesus and then he explains with lots of additional enriching principles and uh, um you know doctrines and illustrations and yeah taking it to the next level some of his preachings and teachings looks like an extended laws and commandments of what jesus left behind as laws and commandments or preaching yeah this, that's why it's quite interesting all right the next thing is uh, the next title would be the glorification of believers very interesting title isn't it glorification of believers all the glory belongs to jesus all glory to god almighty what is his glorification of believers i'll tell you what you are the image of christ image of god right you are created in his image you are, you you are breathing the breath of god the spirit is in you reigning in you it comes from god yes and you have been made by god yeah from the dust but the maker creator is god himself so ultimately when you worship this trinity the father in heaven the son and the holy spirit uh whom are you actually glorifying the trinity when the trinity is glorified in you that's exactly called as the glorification of believers you all were thinking something else or oh, because i'm a wonderful preacher because i'm a great teacher because i'm a great miracle worker because i uh, speak prophecies and uh, uh, dreams and visions or a gift given to me wonderful nice but who gave you it comes from above it's given as a free gift of grace to serve the mankind right not to rule over the mankind not to dominate them but to serve them and likewise you are a very gentle brother you are a compassionate sister you are that tolerant brother you are that long suffering sister yeah this is the fruit of the spirit and that is also given for free all the we are gentiles we don't deserve but since you accept the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the lord of lords and the king of kings for that one reason you get this free gift <laughs> nobody could stop you from receiving this free gift of grace yes acts 238 acts 1118 acts 1126 all this if you take and read and philippians 2 10 and 11 john 14 6 once you have accepted is the life the way and the truth you give you get the free gift of grace and the grace give delivers the anointing of the holy ghost and therefore the holy ghost the holy spirit is reigning in you and through whom or with the help of that power you are glorifying the name of jesus that's called as a glorification of believers let's turn our bible to the book of john 17 john chapter 17 and verse number 22 will be our meditation verse and let us see how much we could cover yeah um verse number 20 onwards i will read i do not pray for these alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be one in us that yeah, jesus belief and jesus desire and wishes for one and all of us is we all have to become like him john 14 12 also you'll be able to do things that are that i have done and you will be able to do things more than i have done yeah because i go to my father and i will pray for you and i will be an intercessor hebrews 13 and mark 16 last two verses and uh, 1 john chapter 2 verses uh, 1 and 2 all these things will clearly indicate G- uh, colossians 3 1 and 2 will indicate that jesus is playing the role of an intercessor and is pl- is praying that you and i will understand that the concept of trinity is reigning in us and therefore we become like jesus that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me i have given them that they may be one just as we are one oneness in christ that's why jesus believes in that oneness as of in the family prayers very important where two or three gather in my name two or three don't limit it to two or three 
if you have a family of 20 people gather every day there are joint families right or in your family your family is very small two, two parents and one kid three of you join your hands and pray you have your parents with them five or six join your hands and pray hands means what praying in one accord in one spirit in one like-minded right don't fight like dogs and then come let's pray and all that no sorry first apologize settle down that matter and then come only that that unification in spirit happens the glorification happens after that not before unification you need to bring that oneness within the family today you see the christian families are even worse than some of the heathen families and some of the unbelievers families even they they have been taught well by their own religious doctrines what is this about being patient and uh, loving your family and uh, you're responsible for your bloodline this and that they behave better than us whereas here we take the bible and we throw stones at each other or garbage against each other or bad mouth against each other judging throwing that pron pronouncing the judgment i did that i did that mistake even couple of weeks ago against one of my important family member and then i had to sob for almost a week the whole night asking god this is called as the wiles of the devil beloved how much ever stronger you may be in the doctrines in the promises of god you will end up doing that you will slip off but you can overcome for which you need to have both both biblical knowledge and spirit filled experiences spirit led experiences about which we discussed in our previous sermons that's why you need to stay attentive walking in diligence walking in spirit walking in wisdom walking in light ephesians 5 galatians 5 verses uh, what um, 22 and 23 walking in the spirit being led by the spirit and only that will promote oneness in your body oneness in your flesh oneness in your spirit oneness in your family and wherever you go you will have this habitual practice of building that unity some people you know 10 people will be united one spoil sport will come he will split all the 10 people in 10 different directions that is called as the demonic you know demonic wisdom divide and conquer 16th century east india company was established by british in india right and their important foremost strategy was to divide and conquer therefore they brought splits they brought in new policies they seduced people hey we will give you these many things for free and this and that and they confused people and ultimately these guys could never be united many people started spying against each other and therefore they are able to create that division and therefore they are able to conquer without any problem this is the trick of the devil that this happens pretty much in christendom these days you people have to be very very careful and it happens in the midst of christian families these days and jesus was pretty much talking about this yeah and the glory which you gave me i have given them that they may be that they may be one you and i may be one just as we are one the church is fighting against another church congregation fighting against another congregation denomination fighting against another denomination one pastor fighting against deacon deacon fighting against a believer all this nonsense the ruckus happens on the floor of the of christian congregations is because people have not understood john 17:22 and that is why we are becoming such bad examples bunch of rotten apples and how do you be how do you preach christ how do you teach christ and how do you demonstrate christ through your lifestyle people would people would never ever would want even make an effort to listen to you why because you are not living as a role model 1 Timothy 4:12 says you got to be role model in conduct and speech and purity in love but all of this are missing and then you say please accept Christ you go to heaven i know how to go to heaven you first go to heaven this is what people are you know telling us and the person who's telling uh, you know making that statement is an unbeliever what a shame right you got to first conduct yourself as a christian the behavior of a christian romans 12 verses 12 to 22 the mark of a christian the mark of your ministry is well stipulated within certain guidelines second corinthians 6 1 to 11 if that is not enough i will give you one more verse colossians chapter 3 uh what is that uh, uh then uh, what is that the character of a new man the character of the new man paul would have written beautifully i discussed we we preached that also a few sermons ago right colossians 3 verses 12 to i'm just looking at the bible give me one moment huh? very important 
verses 12 to 17. Colossians 3 verses 12 to 17. Very, very important. You got to check on these things. How is your lifestyle? Is it in alignment? Only then you will have that scope. You will have that opportunity for this oneness, unimosity. Wherever you go, you bring in you, you bring in union, or you bring one likeness of Christ. People would be split and divided. But when you go there, brother, carrying this kind of doctrine, this kind of message from the Word of God, this kind of spirit, this kind of attitude, you will bring unity in that place. That's called as leadership skills. Yeah, people who are working as managers, senior managers, directors. Every single day, you would end up resolving human conflicts, right? Conflict resolution is a very, very important skill that every leader should possess. If you're not able to resolve conflicts within the team, you are not fit to be called as a leader. And I had my struggles too when I took out when I when I got into this administrative job, and I ended up being a spoil sport for the company instead of resolving conflicts. I created conflicts. Ended up creating conflicts. Then I had a wonderful mentor, yeah, uh, who was my boss, ex-boss. And that person taught me a lot in hard ways. And I learned from him. And then when I compared it to Jesus' leadership quality, this is exactly what Jesus was doing, resolving conflicts. Paul made several mistakes, actually. He ended up in a conflict with, his, uh, with one of his good friends, Barnabas, who was the one who introduced Paul to the Christian congregation. And he fought with him because of another guy, John Mark. Right, and he lost his school, and then he took Silas and uh, you know uh, uh, who is that? Barnabas took uh, John Mark. John Mark and Barnabas are from the same place. Maybe that is another uh, uh, you know attachment he had towards that person. And and you know what? Paul apologized. Why? Because John Mark proved that he is a very good disciple in Christ uh, through his ministries uh, with uh, Barnabas. And Paul hears and he humbles himself and apologizes and and says that bring Mark. It's going to be useful. And he once again. You know, used Mark uh, for one some of his opportunities, some of the ministry. Sorry, this is called as oneness in spirit, right? Sometimes you know you are divided, you are split apart, you are thrown apart. But then, when you come back to your senses, there is nothing wrong for you to acknowledge your mistake and get into the oneness. I think, I think it's well said. So far, so good, right? Time is running. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 17 and let's understand Paul what he talks about this. Same concept, 8.17. We preached a lot about uh, Romans 8. Oh, Romans 8 is well taught through many of my sermons. You will find in the playlist. If the children then hairs, hairs of God and joint hairs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Paul is taking this oneness in a different angle, in a different perspective. What is his perspective? He is trying to mix oneness with the long suffering. I will tell you what, you will never be able to exercise or practice unity, unimosity without tolerance, without patience. You need to have a lot of tolerance many times in life. And when is your tolerance and patience put to test? Only during the moments where you are completely right and the other person is completely incorrect. <laughs> that is when your quality of patience and tolerance is put to test. This is exactly understood in a reverse order uh, by the people of the world. right? Many people think they are very patient to wait for their opportunities and uh, you know wait for upliftment promotions this and that but then from biblical standpoint it's all about walking in patience and tolerance when the other person commits mistakes against you matthew 5 43 to 48 you can you can you can uh, read right bless those who persecute and uh, pray for those who will harass you this is the teaching what jesus leaves behind and this attitude uh, you think it will split the relationship or it will unite the relationship of course, it will bring unity. The other person who is constantly harassing you, the other person is constantly scourging you, the other person is con constantly scolding you or with bitter envy or f fighting with you or waiting for quarrel. You constantly 
or you consistently keep on forgiving the person walking in tolerance that guy would not smile but you will block him and you will say good morning <laughs> how are you the guy will get irritated but not all the time right after a few days the guy will start to think what kindness where is he getting this from where is he getting this tolerance and patience how is that guy able to love me how is he even able to say good morning and smile at me that will bring that unity that will bring that you know reunion and patching patching back the relationship the friendship this is christianity this is christ like mindset that is why the societies which even hates this religion they have tremendous respect for jesus teaching they don't hate jesus they don't hate his teachings they don't hate his principles and doctrines but people who exercise that partially impartially uh, not in holistic measure that's why we are half cooked vegetables we are looked like half cooked vegetables and that's why they are passing many states they are passing this uh, con- you know law of, of conviction it's a crime that you force somebody and convict them forcing means not pulling by hands but even through confusions you don't practice what you preach then you are you don't deserve to preach anything yeah although the law is not very clear like this but uh, i'm telling you the definition the reason for that law is law of uh, convict, uh, convicting others right you don't practice what you preach jesus never preached what he did not practice he always practiced and then he preached he lived his life and therefore he preached and that that's why you know that is that oneness between his father and himself and those who shall follow the footprints of jesus there will be oneness between them and the trinity which we discussed in john uh, chapter 17 and 22 all right that's good enough for an explanation let's cover one more topic today the next title is going to be the importance of preaching the good news yeah significance of preaching the good news of gospel what is this good news good news good news good news is nothing but grace what is the difference between grace and mercy or what is the difference between old covenant and new covenant old covenant 613 commandments you fail in 613th commandment you have to start from the first commandment and prove everything like oh, the olden days examinations happens this way right you fail in one subject you have to appear for all the 10 subjects and once again clear everything then they introduce something called as arrears semesters and arrears you don't have to read everything semesters you your portions are divided into four p- fragments and in that four fragments also you fail you have to only appear for that failed examination that's it you don't have to reprove who you were or who you are on the subjects where, where you have cleared your past that's called as grace you can begin from where you have left where you started to fail you just begin from that point this is called as the good news <laughs> that's why you know to reconcile with the father it's easy nowadays in the name of jesus you and i receive the free gift of grace not because you and i deserve not because you and i worked and earned it no it was given for free nobody can earn this grace it was given to us for free because jesus earned it all through his lifestyle through his sacrifices as sin offering on the cross shedding his precious blood in whose name there is deliverance there is redemption in whose names there is freedom liberalized from the bondage of the devil whatever may be the bondage sickness illness infirmity transgression and uh, yeah poverty stricken whatever it may be the name of jesus is ready to deliver us and free us from the bondage how many of you are with me this is the good news and not only that the another good news is jesus is the life of salvation he is the way to salvation yeah something is guaranteed you stick to the name of jesus and follow his doctrines laws and commandments not at the during the beginning days right so people would take get water baptized first 6 months very serious that's it after that they are backslidden but they still think since we have gone through water baptism and accepted the name of jesus our place is guaranteed brother nothing to worry who said this until your last breath you got to stick to the principles taught to you by jesus 
and his Holy Spirit. And therefore you have a chance to reach the kingdom of heaven. And he is the way, the life, the truth. He is the way. And he left behind lots of principles and teachings and doctrines, illustrations only to help us. Many people think in other way around. Oh, so many, he's burdened us with so leaving behind so many laws and commandments. Laws and commandments he left behind only to help us. Look at those. It's only for our benefit. It's only for, you know, for, for, for our benefit. Absolutely. That's the right word. How to reach to that place, the point, the, the destiny, kingdom of heaven. That's the another good news. All these good news were missing in the old covenant. Because the Messiah was yet to be born. Yeah, The messianic prophecies were yet to be fulfilled. The earth was not ready enough to receive the birth of Messiah. Therefore, these good news were not fulfilled. Only uh, two or three people got the privilege to see Jesus. Simon and uh, Anna, they were all old covenant people. They were prophets, men of God, saints of God. And they received this uh, baby Jesus and they said, now I am ready to depart from this earth. And another guy is John the Baptist. Obviously, he was an old covenant guy and then he received Jesus in style. And, uh, you know, right, he was like a Jesus a foreigner. And then he, he says, uh, I'm not even worthy to loosen his or clean, you know, loosen his sandal straps. Uh, uh, but then he is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I am baptizing you with water. But what a great prophet. There isn't any great prophet than John the Baptist. Jesus told us. Okay. Now, I think we have explained a little bit about this good news. Now, no, I, I don't think you should have any more confusions with this good news. What is Jesus talking about this? Mark 16, 15. Mark comes after Matthew. Correct, no? Mark 16, 15. Sorry, it took a little time to turn my Bible. Um, the Great Commission. Commission and omission. I think uh, we preached about this also. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven as they sat. I'm, talk I'm reading from John 16, 14. They sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Many people witnessed. In one... Paul records that in one place, 500 people witnessed his presence. Jesus appeared to 500 people, one place. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> Creations and creature. Don't spare anything or anyone. <laughs> go and tell them the good news. This is Mark 16, 15. And the more you speak about Jesus the more you spread the good news. And what is the good news? We already explained. He who believes and is baptized will be saved and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. Good news. You will be given all authority to fight against the wiles of the devil and bind the forces of the devil and come out victoriously. That is the good news. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, I, I explained this already, don't take poison and start drinking it. That's foolishness, madness. But when you live in this world, the food you eat, there is pesticide in it. The air you breathe, there is a lot of chemical component in it. And now pandemic is adding more to it, natural pestilences. Out of all this, if God is helping you to live that healthy life without any problems and troubles, that is called as taking up serpents and bring, drinking anything deadly, nothing will harm you. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You have to pray for the sick. Because why? Jesus, the lame, when he prayed, the lame walked. The blind were able to see. Yeah, today you and I have been given the same authority to pray over the lame, the sick, the blind. Yeah? The people who are inflicted, all of them, we have that Great responsibility to pray. And this will be the mark of a Christian. Yeah. Why? Because he believes in that good news. We will see one more scripture and we will close. Romans chapter 10. What is Paul thinking about this? Always we need to verify. See, I always keep telling you two people I go to and I get all my questions answered. There isn't anything that is that remains unanswered. 14 epistles from Paul, including Hebrews. And four books of, about Jesus. I get all my answers in that. 
Romans 10, 13 to 15. Um, for whoever calls upon the name of Lord, they will be saved. How then shall they call on him um, in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace or bring glad tidings of good things. You understand? First of all, for you to believe, you must have heard the gospel enough, read the gospel enough, understood the gospel enough, perceived the gospel enough. Many people are off-cooked vegetable. When they rush, they read and they start to preach. What is this? In my personal testimony, I told you, God had to train and coach me, mentor me for almost 25 years. Only then he opened the doors of ministry. That too, I am an offline speaker. But God will enable that platform. And even if it doesn't enable, I have no problem with that. There are a lot of people who are listening to our messages and benefiting. That's good enough for us. My calling is not to open up a church or something like that. Now, I'm an evangelist. I'm a Bible teacher. I preach and teach the good news, the word of God. And many of us are given that gift, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Many of us have the gift to teach and preach, but we don't use it. But you use it for your corporate work and all that and you earn money. You convert into some dollars and rupees. Sorry, you will have zero treasures in heaven. All right. So I think we learned about two different things. So one uh, the first thing what we discussed was about uh, the glorification of believers and the significance of preaching the good news and what is this good news all about. I think we had a comprehensive view, a very good discussion. May God bless us. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have enabled in our lives. And we want to thank you uh, teaching us in a very personalized way that you have helped us, helped us to understood the significance of good news and continue to be on our side. Lead us by our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Subscribe to our channel. Please get to access to all our playlists. Do not miss on any videos or notifications. And share this uh, channel details with at least one soul every day you target. To what? Share the good news. Share the word of God. Yeah, that's your duty. It's your, your responsibility. And the rest you leave it to God. And... Uh, Lastly, please pray for me or I'm, and our ministries. 10 seconds, close your eyes and pray for us. God bless you. Take care. I will meet you soon in the next session.